Maybe it's time to think of a life beyond the X-Men? You mean, leave the team? What have we been fighting for all these years if not the chance to finally live our lives? The X-Men need us here. Our son will need us more. Disney Plus has been putting out garbage show after garbage show with no signs of stopping. But along comes X-Men 97 and is shocking us all. It's surprisingly not bad. There's a few things here and there to make fun of, but on the whole, this show is completely subverting our expectations. But could something darker be hiding in X-Men 97's production? Are we about to get hit with a pile of poop with X-Men 97's remaining episodes? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the dumpster fire that is Disney's Marvel. Growing up in the 90s was a glorious experience. It was such a wonderful time to be alive. We had some of the best video games, movies, music, and pop culture. We also had something that largely disappeared. Saturday morning cartoons. Make no mistake, looking at it through the lens of adulthood, all Saturday morning cartoons were was a way to market crap to kids. We got commercials for toys, games, and a ton of sugary cereals. I can't even look at Tony the Tiger without wanting to puke nowadays. But these Saturday morning cartoons gave us some of the best kids TV shows in history. Well, maybe not Nickelodeon given the revelations in the newest docuseries Quiet on Set, but I won't get into that in this video. I'll just keep it to the wholesome stuff that we got from Fox. I remember obsessing over the latest episodes of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Spider-Man, and X-Men. It was right around the time I got into reading comics. Mainly the Archie run of Ninja Turtles, which had a couple crossovers with Marvel, which is how I got into Spider-Man and the X-Men. To have cartoon versions to supplement the comics was a dream come true for a nerdy kid like me. The 90s X-Men animated series was absolutely stellar. We got some of the best adaptations of characters like Magneto, Apocalypse, Mr. Sinister, Wolverine, and many others. The series was its own thing, but it tried to stay as faithful as possible to the source material. Imagine that! A TV show that remained faithful to its source material. You couldn't have that in 2024, but I digress. The 90s X-Men animated series got us adaptations of some phenomenal storylines, including Days of Future Past, One Man's Worth, The Phalanx Covenant, The Phoenix and Dark Phoenix Sagas, and many, many more. It was a fantastic show that actually still holds up well today. So the kid in me got super excited when I found out they were making a continuation of X-Men the Animated Series. But I had been burned so many times by Disney that I just couldn't help getting anxious about the ways this could go completely wrong. Shows like Loki, WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Echo, Miss Marvel, Moon Knight, Hawkeye, shit, pretty much every MCU show on Disney Plus has sucked. So I didn't have high hopes for the X-Men 97 show. So I figured to sail the high seas and watch the first few episodes, and I was actually pretty shocked. X-Men 97 was not that bad. The X-Men has always been woke, ever since the first issue way back in 1962. It began as an allegory for the civil rights movement that was prevalent at that time. It's always been about social justice, but it was social justice done right not playing in the oppression Olympics. The 90s cartoon likewise did tackle social issues such as racism and homelessness with its depiction of the Morlocks and Sentinel storylines. Shockingly, X-Men 97 treads that line a little more carefully than the 90s show did. There is the outstanding issue of making Morph non-binary and a little too over-sexualized for a kid's TV show though. And speaking of over-sexualization, did anyone catch the depiction of the giant vagina in the third episode? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, you heard me right. Just in case you didn't believe me, here's the scene in question. Yeah, it's inside Jean's mind, so it's larger than life. But the kid coming through the, uh, opening makes it way more obvious. You know, after having watched the first four episodes of Quiet on Set, I feel like any time adults catch some weird sexual innuendo on kids' TV, there's something more nefarious going on. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if years down the line, we found out that one of the producers had some weird kink or fetish, but I digress. The show seems to be following the origin story of Nathan Summers, better known as Cable. 
The original animated series made heavy use of Cable in many of its storylines, and I have to say, it was a pretty kick-ass representation of the character. 2018's Deadpool 2 gave us the first live-action representation of the character on screen, portrayed by none other than Thanos himself, Josh Brolin. While not getting enough screen time in my opinion, Brolin did a phenomenal job bringing Cable to life. So to see this storyline adapted in X-Men 97 is very nice to see. Three episodes in, the show doesn't seem to hit you over the head with a shovel full of woke just yet. So I'm cautiously optimistic this will turn out well. But hey, the first two episodes of WandaVision were pretty good, and we all know how that show turned out. I'm actually very curious to see where X-Men 97 takes the whole Madeline Pryor Cable storyline, as well as any other characters they might introduce. They already gave us Mr. Sinister, so perhaps Apocalypse will make a return? Or maybe even the X-Man himself, Nate Gray? Only time will tell. But what do you guys think of X-Men 97? Do you think it'll turn out well? Or are we about to get hit with a woke bomb? Please do let me know down below in the comments, and as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one.